Hello everyone, it's Fatalist Millennial here. It's uh, been a while since I made one of these. Uh, probably just a few weeks. This is episode three. Um, and the reason for that, it's been a while, I guess, is really, I mean, I guess things are starting to look up a bit. Obviously, I'm not a serial fatalist in the sense that I am always pushing those things. It's not necessarily a feeling that I want to be feeling, but things were looking up. I got vaccinated. Um, with my first dose uh, at the time of recording this. Um, lockdowns across the continent are looking like they're lifting uh, and things seem to be getting better in terms of the pandemic. Now, that's all well and good, but then uh, I hate to say reality sets in, but other news comes out. What oh, just broke today? As of today, I was reading up on how there's an investigation not on the tax fraud from American billionaires, but on the leaking of tax documents that points out how they pay just so little in taxes and this is obviously something that I feel that people have been aware of for a long time and should not be necessarily new information but it is just so frustrating to see something come to light such as a truth like this and still not really seeing consequences to those actions people like Jeff Bezos and Warren Buffett and even Elon Musk really behind the scenes are shady businessmen CEOs tech owners you know um, sometimes I forget about all of Elon's transgressions and I single him out only because he is someone that can easily be idolized more than someone like Jeff Bezos. Bezos is very quiet. Elon is right front and center. Tesla as a company is amazing and they're innovating on electric cars but also the production of electric cars is detrimental to the environment because of the lithium and um the cobalt mines and what it, essentially the part the the materials needed to create electric car batteries are uh, not toxic in themselves but the refinement process is very toxic and it's just it's very it's sad because I am a I am a millennial and a lot of millennials I feel at least um, or at least a good chunk of us and how we're portrayed is we are champions of you know environmentalism and uh, Greta Thunberg, who's not a millennial, is but who's a Zoomer, is really taking big strides in that direction. But um, I think we millennials are maybe not as uh, actionable as she is. Um, but again, I should preface all this. This is all just a lot of this is my opinion. Uh, other people are going to have different opinions. Other people are going to, in my age group, are going to have different opinions and different views. I know that. I know that's very true, but I digress. So, yeah. Um, I just wanted to talk about, I'm going to do something a little different today. Um, I'm going to read something out that I just saw. And... Uh, 
I feel like it's a shared experience or um, thought process um, that really, it just kind of speaks to me. And um, it, uh, it just, I think it really does a good job of almost saying like, what, not my mission statement, it's not my mission to spread fatalistic ideas or if you want to call yourself a realist uh, and pessimist um, it's not my goal it's more just I'm sharing them because I need a place to share them and this kind of really encompasses how I feel um, and it seems that at least a good chunk of young people feel this um, because the generation we were born in just kind of put us in this situation where you already had well-established companies and the movement of wealth was really starting to kind of pick up speed at a time when we were too young to do anything about it. And that is ultimately why, like, I decided to name my channel this and it's because it's this fatalistic feeling of like there's nothing I can do um, moving forward to kind of fix this and um, I'm just going to read out this post and mind you I browse imager and so some posts like this are stitchings of tweets and tumblr posts and things like that and that's pretty much what this is just to give some context and so um i'm going to dive into there's a reply here um is sort of my main point but i'm going to dive into kind of the beginning just to give some context so it's a tweet Tumblr tweet. Oh, look at me. I'm a reaction channel, but I don't have video, so I'm describing everything. So, this tweet says, ain't that the fucking truth? And below it is the classic me, someone else meme format. So, me, I feel like my life is pointless. Therapist, why? Me, impending fascism and climate change mean I probably won't live to see 60 therapist are you sure that's rational me looks at the camera like jim on the office funny gave me a chuckle you know and this is actually in reply to a post about this point in history sure is a really wild time to be trying to manage mental illness and that's yeah like classic dumb memes <laughs> Share it on Twitter. But I might add that this post was made on the 14th of October 2018. So this is pre pandemic, which kind of comes in later. And because this was a tweet shared on Tumblr, the first reply from uh, someone by the name of Wolf in the Thorns on Tumblr says, honestly, in my work as a therapist, I'm seeing this a lot. And to be honest, I still don't have any satisfactory approach to it. A heavy dose of existentialist, create your own purpose, tempered with when the plane's going down, put your own oxygen mask on first. But yeah, there is no ethical way to work on individual emotional distress without acknowledging the systemic, socioeconomic, geopolitical fuckery going on at the moment and the sheer grief that comes with it. I think that does a really good job of explaining the fact that it's not that depression and um, pessimism, bad self-esteem, poor mental health is all coming in at the woodwork. I think it people really seem especially the older generations they just think oh we're all sad just stop being so sad life's great you can own a house <laughs> no you can't not really 
um, it's it's the environmental pressures that are on us that are pushing all these things to the surface and they're really coming out and I would argue that if we were born 50 100 maybe 200 years ago that not as many of us would be suffering from this kind of like ailment I guess is the best way to put it none of us would be as depressed none of us would be as um maybe dependent on antidepressants or any other kind of like drugs associated with you know balancing mental states and improving mental health because the environmental pressures on us are just so great um i could be wrong i could be very wrong who knows maybe the stats show that all the ratios are the same i don't know i'm not looking into it that's not what the point of this is maybe one day down the line if i take this way 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 more seriously i'll uh i'll do a lot of like research prep but it's it's more just my feelings my opinions and everyone's allowed to disagree i'm not really worried about that uh so following this uh castellific replies on tumblr i'm a guidance counselor slash psychologist for teenagers and it's getting really hard to motivate young people to work for a future they don't believe in uh, they look at their future and see global warming world war three unemployment political ins instability probably should have been instability i'm not going to dock you points though poison and everything they eat the earth and animals dying all around them I saw the video where someone was asking French teens in the 50s how they imagined the future would be. The war hadn't been over for long, and yet it was all positive with, like, peace and flying cars and such. Then they went <clears throat> and asked the same questions to nowadays teens, and the hell, and hell that was depressing. Some still had hope, but it was just that, well, I hope I'll have a nice house and maybe some kids. But there was such a hesitancy to it like they didn't dare to hope too much people mock greta thunberg but what they don't get is that when she said you stole my dreams it was the truth young people don't get to dream like they used to they don't dream anymore they grief all the time that that won't be anymore and that's just so fucking sad and And then a follow-up to this by someone called Oja Majos says, the fact that both the tweet and these reblogs are pre-pandemic makes this post even worse. And it really does. And I agree with that. And I agree with this person's uh, explanation. <clears throat> I personally have dreams and goals. And compared to where even my parents were at at the same age um those accomplishments feel like they're going to happen further and further away they're always oh eventually oh eventually oh eventually and never all right i'm a millennial i'm between the ages of like huh, the elder millennials are almost hitting 40 at this point but 40 and 20, 20, 23, something like that, depending on who you ask, you know, 20, 24. And I don't, I couldn't tell you from my own anecdotal evidence, millennials I know who are older than me don't have houses or land. Um... I count myself in the lucky few where I live in an apartment um, and was able to move out and not everyone even gets to do that anymore it seems everyone's living at home unless you have money or come from money or just worked 
way harder and got so lucky than anyone else, which is so rare. You don't have it good. And that's... <clears throat> I just, I can't disagree that that's where I feel like things are headed. That <clears throat> those dreams and those childhoods that we had um, are gone. And I think the Gen Zs are feeling it more too. You know, it's if YouTube was the millennial platform and Vine was kind of this weird transition platform, uh, watching TikToks and Reels and seeing all the young people and the dark humor they make and the, the types of people and, and the types of like mental states that people openly express they're in are, are worse. <clears throat> and social media is doing it to us too because all you do all day is compare your life to other people's lives and really all it says is, is if you're not successful young um, then you failed but no one should a be expected to be that successful young but b I, <clears throat> I as someone who's older don't feel like I'm going to be successful anytime soon, though, even though it's a more reasonable time. I don't know if in 10 years I'm going to have everything that I want or if it's all going to come crashing down around me. <clears throat> and to me, for me, as someone who watched a lot of you know discovery and environmental shows and programming and you know Einstein predicted this and so and so predicted that 2030 and beyond is <clears throat> is going to be a scary time because that's where you know things are really going to start ticking taken away and the the consequences of our decisions for the past hundred plus years since the industrial revolution are are really going to hit us in the face and if we're not ready for it um and we're not it doesn't really feel like we are we have ideas but ooh, on a grand scale how do you terraform a planet in reverse? How do we take, you know, we have an idea of how we could take Mars and make it livable because we've been doing the exact same things that we would do there on Earth. You establish essentially pollution factories and you pump the air full of water vapor and co2 and other things and you warm up the planet and and then once you do that that's when you can establish vegetation when there's co2 in the air and you start producing oxygen and but how do we reverse it how do we take something like venus which is a runaway greenhouse uh, and it's too hot and too thick and too humid and all these things. And how do we return it to a, an, a habitable, life-filled planet, if it ever was one? Who knows? We have no idea, because we can't even step foot on that thing. We sent a probe there, and it melted in a minute. So we're, and, and almost, oh, just, sorry, as I think, I just, oh, I'm amazed at my own self for this. So in the same sense that boomers play the stock market 
and someone like Elon throwing it back to him and you know all these hustles and cash grabs with crypto and the stocks uh, in true boomer fashion just like the stock market with the current environmental crisis the boomers and to an extent the greatest generation before them and the ones that lived through the depression um have done what they've done they've perpetuated the situation that we're living in now and right around the time that it's all gonna blow up in our face it's the millennials and the gen xers and the gen z's and the generation after gen z which is gonna be who knows we're all gonna be left holding the bag which is exactly what happens in the stock market when you influence people to pump up the stocks and they just cash out and that's exactly what's going to happen except cashing out is them dying so a lot of them won't live to see the world that they created and everyone talks about leaving the world a better place than when you found it and they haven't done that they're not doing that if they're trying it's not enough and i really i really just think that you know i don't think i'm alone in thinking this and when i see posts like this it affirms that i'm not the only one and not only am I not the only one that feels this way, but I'm not the only one that feels the helplessness that comes with it. And so yeah, so bit of a different episode. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. Um, and so this is the Fatalist Millennial signing off from another entry we'll see you in the next one uh, whenever i get around to it really all right